This is a Raspberry Pi. It's a very versatile microcomputer with many uses, from a NAS to a home server to a retro gaming box, which is what we'll be focusing on today. Before we start, we need to see what Raspberry Pi model is best for this purpose. The cheapest Raspberry Pi is a Raspberry Pi Zero for only 5 bucks. However, the Zero already has problems emulating most SNES games, which makes it less than preferable for a DIY SNES Mini. If you want to emulate SNES and GBA reliably, you'll need a Raspberry Pi 1 at the very least. If you want to emulate PS1 on top of that, you can best go for the Pi 2. If you want Nintendo 64, the Pi 3 and the Pi 4 can play Dreamcast games. I went for the Raspberry Pi 3B+, Plus, mostly because the case I was using doesn't support the 4. Speaking of which, apart from the Pi itself, this project requires a microSD card, a USB stick, preferably one with a blinking light, a HDMI cable, a power cable, a controller and a case. The case I went for is the Super Pi case by Retroflag. This case is just unmatched in quality. The only case I can think of that's better than this one is the Sega Mega Drive case, but it's also made by Retroflag. Oh yeah, the controller I used is the Wired SN30 Pro. This controller is good enough for the games I'll be playing and is really cheap. I actually just ordered it so I don't actually have it yet, but everyone says it's good so I think it's good. The stuff you have to do to get it to work is not that much. Plug it in, put RetroPie in your microSD card and put that in, and if you have one of these safe shutdown cases you need to plug in those cables as well. Now you have a retro game emulator box. If you actually want to add games to play, which I think you do, you need to format your USB stick at the system, put ROMs on there at your PC, plug it back in and wait until the light stops blinking. And there they are. If again your case has safe shutdown, you'll need to install a script via the command line. The command of which will be in the description. Because it's really long. With that said, my experience setting this thing up was bumpy to say the least. Putting the thing together went pretty well, aside from the fan that was really difficult to fit in and to know what pins go where. The installation of RetroPie went flawlessly, but that's where the first problem showed itself. I was using a third party power adapter that was rated at 2.4 amps, so the Raspberry Pi 3B Plus needs at least 2.5 amps and probably more seen as the fan needs power too. This means that the system functions but constantly complains about having too little power. Case in point, we bought an adapter rated at 3 amps and it works well now. Also when testing out some of the ROMs, the USB stick somehow corrupted and the system started boot looping. To fix this I just formatted it again. Well, there you have it. Your very own SNES Classic that can play NES, SNES, Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance, Nintendo 64, PlayStation 1, Mega Drive, Saturn, and so much more that I forgot. I already know that I forgot Atari. Alright. This is the best way to play your retro games in a modern way. Thanks for watching to the end. I hear rumours that if you like and subscribe, you'll get a cookie. I don't know about you, but I'm doing it right away. To the bump, to the bump, to the base, bump to the bump, to the bump.